So evolutionary explanation of aggressive behaviour. So one way that humans may have evolved to be aggressive is through sexual competition. So in the past, males would seek access to females and they would have had to compete with one another in order for that to happen. Now, one of the best ways that they could eliminate that competition to eliminate that, that um, rival was through physical aggression. So that competition. Now, the argument is that those males who used aggression successfully and were successful in that competition and had reproductive success would pass that aggressive trait on to their offspring. Now, it has been uh, researched that male traits imply that competition with other males did take place. So the idea that males have about 75% more muscle mass than women indicates that there had to be an evolution reason why males developed more muscle mass, why they are stronger than females. And it um, puts argues that that is because they had to compete against one another in order to be um, successful in reproducing and gaining access to the females. Equally, sexual jealousy has led to the development of aggression. So male aggression occurs because of sexual jealousy and paternal uncertainty. So males can't ever be sure that the offspring is their own and they could result in cuckoldery. So they could run the risk of raising a child that isn't their own. So investing valuable resources, time and energy into a child that isn't carrying their own genes. Now it's believed that males have adapted the function of sexual jealousy, jealousy either to deter a mate from being sexually um, unfaithful, so they have that mate guarding strategy, so they are less likely to stray, therefore they are less likely to run the risk of raising a child that, that isn't their own, that cuckoldery. Equally, there are mate retention strategies as well. So uh, Buss argues that they have evolved for the purpose of keeping a mate. So as well as mate guarding, there could be mate ret retention. So being violent and aggressive towards the female might mean that she is less likely to stray away. Now, the third factor is warfare. So it could be quite difficult to understand how war could have evolved. Now, research and psychologists have argued that human warfare started to obtain resources, such as land and food and territory, to attract mates, so to be more um, reproductive, to have more reproductive success, and to forge bonds between groups. Now, displays of aggressive um, acts and bravery are attractive to females. So any males that will show those traits will have reproductive success and will um, be more likely to pass those traits on to future offspring. Equally, being successful in combat will uh, mean that you might be able to expand your territory to have more land to gain more access to resources and food. Furthermore, it can increase your status as an individual and that would lead to peer respect, increase the bonds between the male members of the group and other groups around them. Now, research has suggested that male warriors in traditional societies actually tend to have more sexual partners and more children if they have been successful in combat. So that supports the idea that that aggressive act in a man and that bravery and that warrior status is attractive to females. So if we were to look at some AO1 slash AO2, because this is an application question, we have that news correspondents in inner cities have remarked how young female, young males frequently carry weapons and engage in threatening behaviour. So that's the bit that we have to respond to. Using your knowledge of evolutionary explanation of aggression, account for these high levels of aggression in young males for marks. So we could talk about the idea that male aggression comes from a need to acquire resources 
such as mates or territories. So that could be they're trying to create their own territory within that inner city and to establish status amongst themselves. So in that um, we could argue that there might be between peers. So the young males are trying to create peer, peer status or gang status. Equally, male aggression derived from sexual jealousy from other males who might have um, sex with or steal their mates and therefore they run that risk of sexual cuckoldry if their female is um, unfaithful. So young males could be using mate retention and mate guarding strategies. So if we were to look at some AO3 then that evaluation, we have supporting evidence. So Daly and Wilson and found that many tribal societies have higher status to those who have um, or sorry they give higher status to those who have committed murder and even in industrialized cities such as USA most the most violent gang members often had the highest status amongst their peers so that strengthens the claim that aggression is an important way for males to gain status and supports the idea that males will have evolved to be aggressive in order to gain status and to have um, more resources. Now we have another explanation for sex differences. So it could be due to socialisation rather than evolution. So parents are more likely to explain why misbehaving was wrong to girls. Whereas if a boy was to misbehave, they were more likely to use physical punishment. Now that is believed that that could lead to an increase in male physical violence and could explain where girls might develop verbal aggression. So that means that gender differences could be a result of environmental and cultural factors, which reduces the claim that humans have evolved to be aggressive. Now equally, this theory isn't particularly useful because it can't explain high levels of cruelty that is found within human wars and conflicts. So it can't explain why um, humans might torture or mutilate their enemies, even when they're defeated and no longer a threat. So if you were to think about the Rwandan genocides, there was wide scale slaughter of whole groups that was in extremely cruel and this cannot be explained by evolutionary adaptations and it could be that de-individuation might be a better explanation of why humans might commit these um, cruelties in group situations rather than being evolved. So describe and evaluate evolutionary explanations of human aggression for 16 marks. So remember your AO1 is worth about 6 marks, so your two AO1 paragraphs and then you are gonna talk about your evaluation points. So you might wanna group sexual competition and sexual jealousy into one AO1 paragraph to the idea that males have developed aggression in order to compete against other males to gain access to the females to increase reproductive success. Those traits get passed on. So you can talk about that aggression has led to to them trying to gain access to a female and then equally you could talk about sexual jealousy within that same argument that actually they use violence in order to try and keep that female to try and make sure that she doesn't have any sexual infidelity that there isn't going to be a risk of them raising a child that isn't their own there isn't that risk of cuckoldery so they'll use mate guarding and mate retention strategies in order to do so then you might have your AO1 paragraph about warfare why war might have been advantageous and adaptive for humans to begin with so increased territory resources food gain higher status and to create um, group bonds then you're going to talk about your evaluation points so your three evaluation points point evidence explain link um, to demonstrate that you have that that in-depth knowledge remember that to really fully explain why it's a strength or a weakness not that you've just learnt that it is, you can understand, you can um, elaborate on, you can expand on the point and you understand why having supporting evidence and might be a good thing. What is that demonstrating? Why is that strengthening the assumption? Why is the fact that it could be down to socialisation a problem for evolutionary theory? Why is the fact that it can't explain 
cruelty in warfare why is that a problem so remember to try and expand on your points